Namaste and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to discuss the Rahu Mars conjunction. I am here with the blessed Navjeet Kaur of Dr. Arjun Pai's astrology channel to help discuss this transit together today. So nice to be with you, Nav. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, Shanti. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. So we can start with our video. Great. So this Rahu Mars conjunction, it's just been active for, you know, four or five days right now on, as of February 26th. And this is a transit which is going to last into the middle of April. And we're already dealing with difficult Rahu K2 energy because Rahu is in its exalted position of Taurus and K2 is in its exalted position of Scorpio. And so the fact that Mars is now joining Rahu in Taurus is actually considered quite a difficult transit. And on top of that, until Mars actually passes Rahu, we're still in a Kalasarpa yoga period. Although the moon has kind of moved past the Kalasarpa and broken the 100% Kalasarpa energy, the moon moves pretty quickly. And so we don't always include that as the planet that is able to break the Kalasarpa yoga. And so the Kalasarpa really isn't going to be broken uh, properly until April when uh, Mars actually moves past Rahu. And so we're gonna discuss this transit a day. We're gonna discuss its effects on everybody. And then we're gonna also talk about which ascendants, moon and sun positions are gonna be affected most by this transit. Of course, we are going to discuss a lot of challenges and a lot of problems, but what is that point unless we're gonna offer some solutions as well? So I'll, I'll be sure to offer some solutions and remedies. And so I'm gonna start with a quick chant to Rahu. And I did release a video of remedial chanting for Rahu as far as Kalasarpa yoga and this upcoming transit. But if you didn't get a chance to see that, we'll start today with a quick chant in honor of Rahu to help appease this transit for the Kalasarpa Yoga and the Rahu Mars conjunction. Dakaya Mahavriyam Chandradi Javi Mardinam Samhita Garba Sambutam Tamrahu Pranamam Yaham O Mardakaya Mahavriyam Chandradi Javi Mardinam Samhita Garba Sambutam Tamrahu Pranamam Yaham O Mardakaya Mahavriyam Chandradi Javi Mardinam Samhita Garba Sambutam Tamrahu Pranamam Yaham O Mardakaya Mahavaryam Chandradi Javi Mardinam Sumhita Garba Sambutam Tamrahu Pranamam Yaham Om Brahm Brim Brahm Sahara Havinamaha Om Brahm Brim Brahm Sahara Havinamaha Om Brahm Brim Brahm Sahara Havinamaha Om Brahm Brim Brahm Sahara Have Namaha Jai Shri Durga Ki Jai Hari Om Om Namah Shivaya Namaste Nav and to all our followers out there in the astrological community. Thank you. Thank you, Shanati. What a beautiful voice and what a beautiful chanting. It's just so peaceful. Thank you. It's my honor and pleasure and it helps me and it helps everyone out there, hopefully that is dealing with this transit. If you go in the video I released as far as like the full Rahu remedial chanting, there is a clip of the actual sutra from the ancient Vedic text in which you can actually perform this mantra just so you have it as a resource. So now I wanna to begin to discuss this transit and what we're really gonna be dealing with over the course of this intense Rahu Mars conjunction. Now, the first thing that I have here is actually from this morning, which is today, the time that this video is being filmed. 
And as you can see, Mars is at the second degree and Rahu is at the 21st degree. So there's still a lot of time left in this transit. Mars moves fairly quickly, especially when it's not going Vakri or retrograde. But still, this is a pretty long transit that we all have to deal with. And so we have to understand its different stages. And so as far as this conjunction transit is concerned, it's in its earliest stage right now of being pretty much 19 degrees separated. And when planets are more than 10 de degrees away from separation, it's really considered a loose conjunction in terms of the planetary war vibration. Uh, where these planets are not really warring yet because they're not as close as they could be. The next transit here is when Rahu and Mars are going to be at the exact same degree in the transit chart, in the Prashna. And so what you're looking at here in the North and South Indian versions is on March 28th at about eight to 10 in the morning, you're going to be dealing with this Rahu Mars conjunction being at the exact same degree. These planets are not friends, they are considered enemies. So by all understandings of Jyotish, now we're in the period of a planetary war. We'll be in a planetary war pretty much from like March 19th, March 20th through the first week of April. And so this is when these planets are so close that they're basically fighting against each other. And as we discuss this transit and its impact, we'll discuss what does that really mean when these two planets, how do they act when they come into connection with each other. And it can be very difficult, although there are some positive associations. And if you have a Rahu Mars conjunction, especially in Taurus, it's going to be really impactful for you. And it might actually create a lot of positive energy. But whenever there's an intense Rahu transit, if we're connected to our spiritual purpose, if we're connected to our spiritual Dharma, it can be a very beneficial transit. But if we're living in Maya, if we're living in illusion, if we're living a dharmically, it can be one of the most destructive transits in the chart. This transit is going to last until the 13th of April. The 13th of April is the last day that Mars is in Taurus. And so after that, it will move into the sign of Gemini. And really, we won't be having a loose conjunction anymore. So you're really looking at this transit being about a month and a half long. And that's pretty significant as far as transits are concerned. And we don't always have this like Rahu Mars conjunction very common. And so it's something that we have to understand how it's going to impact us. So I'll be using this um, direct uh, conjunction chart to kind of explain how this transit is going to affect us. But again, just to understand it as three stages, the early stage, what, what it's in now, it has this planetary war exact conjunction stage, which is towards the end of March. And then towards the middle of April, it's going to be moving out of Taurus Mars and into Gemini. And that will be the conclusion of this transit. Now, why is Rahu and Mars considered enemies before we even get into specifically what it means when they're conjunct in the sign of Taurus? Why are Rahu and Mars considered enemies? So Mars is a very Pitta planet. It is very fiery. It's very intense. It's very aggressive. And so it represents action. But one of the reasons why, for example, Jupiter and Mars are such great friends is because Mars can be quite rajasic and tamasic at times. It, that means as far as the Mahagunas, it can have this lower energy. If Mars isn't kind of connected to like a higher energy, what the things that it's putting into action are not really sattvic things. So an uninhibited kind of tamasic Mars, what happens is, is that it acts on its impulses without properly like filtering it or making decision. So yes, it's action oriented, but it can be action oriented towards unhealthy patterns and habits. And so a lot of times when you have a very tamasic Mars, which is kind of like why Rahu and Mars are kind of like enemies is because like it's way too much tamasic energy kind of conjuncting and gathering together. And so when Mars is uninhibited, it has like progressive action, but it's towards money and greed. It's towards sex without love. It's, to it's towards the abuse of drugs and alcohol. It's towards these you know, being unkind, being mean, being selfish. And so this is something that when Mars is really in a positive position, 
like, you know, in a Jupiter sign or conjunct with Jupiter, it kind of like makes the actions that Mars take less tamasic. So you might be taking action towards more spiritual lifestyle. But this is not always the case. And so when you look at Rahu, Rahu represents the Maya and a Dharma and illusion. And so when you combine these energies, that means that there's going to be impulsive and compulsive behavior, which is kind of like adding together with action. And so these things that Rahu represents, like our interests, which are selfish, because if you go back to the tale of Swarbanu, all Swarbanu cared was about becoming immortal. You know, it was very selfish. He impersonated himself as the gods. And so one of the really difficult aspects of this transit is that Rahu Mars conjunction will encourage each native in their chart, no matter what your positions are in your chart, to put yourself first. And actually one of the greatest descriptions of Mars that be I believe kind of points at the better energy of Mars is Mars is that planet in the chart which bears welfare and support to the rest of humanity. And Mars is also called Bumayaha, which means the son of the earth. So it has, it not only cares about taking care of its fellow brothers and sisters and animals on this planet, but it actually is concerned with the earth. And this is something that I was just talking with Nav about, you know, if you're living in a wintry condition right now, you're dealing with all these extreme shifts in weather and temperature and all of these things. And so on one side of it, you have people that are selfish and not really concerned with other human beings, with animals, with the earth. But the higher side of Rahu is kind of this mystical identification or this mystical experience of life. And we have to understand that Rahu is currently in its exalted position. So on one side of it, if we're not kind of doing chanting, doing prayers, doing pranayama, leading an Ayurvedic lifestyle, doing yoga, if we're not doing those things, then that's kind of the darker side of Rahu or the more negative side of Rahu, which kind of puts materiality and the selfish, greedy gain of material things first. Now, on the positive side of it, because Rahu is exalted, if you do have a really powerful spiritual sadhana, if you do have a really powerful spiritual practice, you're going to be able to use this transit to experience a mystical expression of life. That means you'll be able to experience God almost anywhere. So again, it has this possibility of being a great blessing and being a, a great curse. And you really have to look at your natal chart as well as your individual spiritual practices to see if you're aligning to the positive energy of this vibration, of this conjunction or not. One of the things about Rahu and Mars is that Mars has to do with kind of doing what you want and doing what you think you need to do. There's always this like progressive one step forward, then another step forward, then another step forward, and not really looking back or taking steps back when it concerns to the positive manifestation of Mars. But Rahu can represent laziness. Rahu can represent indecision. Rahu can represent, there are so many possibilities of things that we could be doing that we get overwhelmed by them and we don't end up doing any of them. Mm -hmm. This will cause with the Rahu Mars conjunction, a horrible impact on the individual, which means if you are procrastinating, if you are being lazy, if you aren't you know, taking these necessary steps forward in your life, physically, mentally, and spiritually, then there can be some severe negative consequences. And so they say that idle hands are the devil's playground, which means on the other side of it, busy is good and it's very good to be staying busy. And with this conjunction, I believe idle hands are the devil's playground to actually be enigmatic of this transit. If people are staying busy during this period, doing positive things, and if you have you know, some of the significations for what charts are going to be impacted by this. If you have those things we're going to discuss in your charts, then it kind of shows that you're able to kind of cope with this transit. You're able to kind of align with the 
vibrations of this conjunction. But if not, there will be kind of falling into old patterns, falling into destructive behavior. Because again, Rahu is associated with Vata Dosha. It's a very windy planet. And one of the things that that means is on our physical body, if we allow Rahu to affect us negatively, it's going to have a catabolic me medical effect. Catabolic mm -hmm. means that your body will start to suffer. It will start to eat itself away. And so possibly if you are too lazy during this period and not progressing yourself throughout your lifetime, you can have autoimmune disorders. You can lose weight you can have a lack of appetite. You can actually, if you are vulnerable to mental illness in your chart, this is not a good transit for you because Rahu and Mars means, okay, before taking an action, and it varies chart to chart, but before taking an action, I'd like to think that the majority of individuals are able to kind of reflect before that action is taken because of the Rahu Mars conjunction, the individual is now more likely to reflect after the action is taken. Uh, that means that they're way, we're all way more likely to do something that is wrong or hurtful. And then the higher energy of this vibration, if you do something wrong compulsively out of desire during this period that's hurtful, the person is likely if they're spiritual, to apologize about that afterwards. But again, doing something wrong and apologizing afterwards is way more tamasic than not doing that wrong thing in the first place. So again, just to have an awareness of that, if you can kind of bring some intellectual, empathic, sympathetic energy into your decision-making process, you can reduce a lot of the negative effects of this period. So that means that before we take action, maybe we should ask ourselves, how selfish is this action? Could I be hurting anyone as a result of this action? Because, because of this alignment, there's definitely a possibility that we could be hurting other people. Now, another thing that I want to mention about the Rahu Mars conjunction is that it represents being radical. Okay, both of these planets are extreme. Rahu is extreme and Mars is extreme. And so when you get these planets together, you can have a lot of extremism. Apply this to the various areas of your life. What part of your chart is this Rahu Mars conjunction happening? If it's happening in your Lugna, that means that you could be being extreme in terms of your ego, in terms of how you treat your body, if it's hitting the second bhava, that means you might be extreme in terms of your diet, in terms of your family. This might mean that, you know, Rahu Mars in the second house, you could be very much predisposed to eating lots of meat and eating lots of processed foods and overeating in general, because we know Rahu is a head which has no body. So that appetite is never satisfied. You know, if Rahu and Mars is in the third house, one of the thing that's interesting about these like Upachaya houses and the Dracona houses, three, six, eight, and 12, it's actually considered that Rahu does pretty well in these houses. So when you're having this Rahu Mars kind of hitting the third house, you're going to be radical, but this is an Upachaya house, self-improvement, communication, and expression. So on one side of it, you're kind of cursing a lot and you're not able to kind of restrain um, your kind of communication with others, but it is upachaya, self-improvement. So there will be some evolutionary energy in terms of the throat chakra here, which is improving the way that you speak. If Rahu and Mars is hitting the fourth house, you may be traveling. Traveling during this time period is actually quite dangerous, right? Uh, not to get into like vaccine politics, but like if you are going to be traveling during this period, you have to be really careful you know, and so Rahu Mars in the fourth house can make us impulsive in that way. It's like, okay, I want to go to Hawaii. Okay, I want to go to South America. And you make the decision in, this, uh, in, a, in a second. And the question is, how is your health going to suffer? So really kind of like meditate on these vibrations. If Rahu and Mars is in the fifth house, we might be having trouble with our children. We might be having blocks in education. There could be a radical kind of experience in the fifth house. 
which means as far as our parenting style, we also might struggle in terms of being radical. In the sixth house, again, now we're getting into one of the better positions of this Rahu Mars transit. This is the house of service. Is there anything that we could, that is more positive for us to be radical about than being of service? I don't think so. Let's be radical. Let's, let's all kind of like connect with that sixth house energy and try to be radical about service. But the sixth house is also the house of enemies. And with Rahu and Mars transiting that sixth house, the difficulty of this transit could actually mean that Rahu represents confusion and deception. And so the people that you think are your friends, and again, Mars can represent men. So whether you're a man or woman, you could be looking at your male friends if this is hitting your chart. Are they deceptive? Do they have ulterior motives? Men a lot of the times have ulterior motives, especially when they're dealing with women. Um, but there is this kind of energy which is hitting the sixth uh, house here. If you are gonna have that transit in your chart, that means that, okay, I really have to kind of step back from the people I consider my friends and second guess if they really have my best interests at heart. This is a very difficult transit for those of you who have it hitting your seventh house. The Rahu Mars hitting the seventh house here is gonna be very difficult in terms of marriage, in terms of relationships, because it's gonna be radical. That means that your partner is gonna be the most extreme version of themselves. What you know, if you really like who they are, that's great. But every single person has moral defects. No single person out there is perfect. And so if you have Rahu Mars transiting your seventh house, get ready to see your partner's uh, moral and character defects. And the best thing that we can do is have compassion about that, right? Mm -hmm. If Rahu and Mars is hitting the eighth house, Again, a drake in a house for Rahu and Mars having its signification, Kujidosha hitting the eighth house. This could be a very um, powerful, positive energy as Mars can represent medicine and the eighth house represents these different healing techniques and these different healing ideologies. And Rahu kind of represents a mystical approach. So on the positive side of it, investigation of Ayurveda, investigation of Jyotish, investigation of Vastu, some practice of the bhakti yoga. But on the difficult side of this, we know in Ayurveda that the eighth house has to do with the final stages of disease, Sanche, um, Prakop, and Prasar. Um, so those are the first three, those take place in the sixth house. And then in the eighth house, you have Stana, Shamshre, Vyakti, and Beta. As these kind of energies manifest, that means that already, if you're out of balance, the doshas themselves are going to deposit in one of the datus in the physical body and then begin to deteriorate it. And we've already talked about that catabolic effect. It's going to be aspecting the second house. So one of the most important things, if you have this eighth house transit, really be careful about what you're putting in your body. This is a good time to take meat out of your diet, to take alcohol out of your diet. So this process is very helpful. If Rahu and Mars is hitting the ninth house, one of the things that we see in the in when this conjunction is hitting the ninth house, it's radical compulsive energy is on one side of it, you have the religiously extreme people. Every single religion out there has an extreme version of it. That means that all no religions are not guilty in terms of being extreme. However, my personal opinion is when you're acting out of an extreme or radical manifestation of religion, you can't be further away from God. There is nothing further away than saying my religion is right and your religion is wrong because my loving God created us all equally. My loving God created us all with this kind of spiritual path in life and no single spiritual path is better or worse than another. I hope some of you agree with me out there. But when we have a radical Rahu Mars energy, this has this energy of my religion is right and all the other religions are wrong. And I actually hate the person. This is if you have Rahu Mars, you're vulnerable to this radical energy. You might hate people that d believe in a different religion than you. So again, stay watchful of that. And on the other side of that Rahu Mars energy, it can be a radical atheist. That means that everyone who believes or tries to have faith in God, this person fights against them. 
They are a radical atheist. You can't prove that God is real. Science can't prove that God is real. So I'm gonna radically believe in science. Now, again, science, believe it or not, is actually theoretical as well. It's, you know, you're actually just trying to uh, understand something uh, based on a theoretical belief system and a theoretical science approach. So again, either side of these spectrums, if Rahu and Mars is hitting your ninth house, let us not be radical in our approach to a religion. If Rahu and Mars is hitting the 10th house, this actually, because of the exalted Rahu energy in the 10th house, this can be a very beneficial time for the career of the individual. Um, but because of Mars, at what cost is your career growing? Because we talked about uh, a preclusion here to selfish behavior. So am I going to be selfish and hurt other people just for the gains of my career, just for the gains of my finances? You know, I think of people like Jeff Bezos, the, the CEO of Amazon, uh, be making billions and billions of dollars while his uh, workers in these warehouses are starving and not even able to like pay for like food every night. So again, like let us not be greedy in this process. If Rahu Mars is hitting your second house, sixth house, tenth house, all of the Artababa houses, let us try to be more balanced and go to that higher energy of Mars, which bears welfare and support to the humanity and the higher side of Rahu, which is kind of able to use mysticism and spirituality to help facilitate our growth. If Rahu and Mars is in the 11th house, this is the house of Kama, which is our desires and dreams. We talked about the Tamasic effect of this aspect of your chart, wherever Rahu and Mars is hitting. So that means your dreams might actually become a little more Tamasic and you wanna be watchful of that. You wanna be careful of that. That means that when it comes to our desires, how selfish are they is really the question we should be asking ourselves. And again, this is the house of friendship and the house of al allies. Now, male allies can definitely show up when this energy is hitting the 11th house. Um, but given that Rahu is there, you really have to uh, question whether these people are your true allies. And again, sometimes when Rahu is transiting or hitting our 11th house, friends, they really come and go because they're kind of like unpredictable or unstable because that's the nature of Rahu sometimes. And so that might mean that your friend, you might be making some great friends over this period, but you don't want to get too attached to them because some aspects of this transit might suggest that they're not here to stay, that you're kind of like past are kind of meeting because you're at the same spiritual frequency right now, but that might not last forever. And then the, the last house, the 12th house of Rahu and Mars is hitting this 12th house, that's going to be the Moksha Bhava. Now, one of the most common misperceptions of the 12th house is that enlightenment or Moksha is an easy road. You know, in all of the charts that I've read for people, when Rahu Mars is hitting that 12th house, it's extremely difficult because you have to let go of things that you didn't want to let go of. Also, Rahu represents Maya and a Dharma sometimes, and it is exalted. So it does, as Dr. Lod used to say, as soon as we realize that we're confused, we're not confused anymore. And so that's kind of this energy of the 12th house, which is like, okay, I thought enlightenment looked like this. I thought spirituality looked like this. Now I understand that it doesn't. You know, one of the things about Rahu and, and Mars hitting your 12th house or just Rahu hitting your 12th house in general, <laughs> a lot of times when we think of enlightenment, we think of like this blissful, euphoric experience. But Rahu and Mars and is going to ground you in that material plane. And you might realize that that actually is escaping enlightenment. In other words, why would the universe give us these physical bodies if the purpose of the, them was trying to escape? It's not. The purpose of life is to be as grounded in your physical body as possible so you can help other people, so you can make this world a better place. If you're just going to be sitting under a tree somewhere trying to get enlightenment, who are you helping? No one but yourself. So there is this selfish aspect. 
Is my spiritual practice selfish or is it helping and serving others? And I think that's something we can understand about this transit. Wonderful. Now, just to talk a little bit, since we covered all the different houses, you can see based on your ascendancy, which, ha uh, which house Rahu and Mars is going to be hitting, um, you know, so, you know, if it's you're an Aries ascendant, it's going to be hitting the second house. If you're a Taurus ascendant, uh, it's going to be hitting the first house, you know, so we have to understand based on our ascendancy, what it's going to be hitting. Now, one of the last points I want to make is, okay, so now we know how this transit is going to be affecting everyone, but in certain people's charts, it's going to be affecting them more than others. So obviously, if you're a Taurus Lagna or Ascendant, Rahu Mars is going to be hitting your house directly, your first house. And so that's going to be really, really intense. Also, if you're a Scorpio Ascendant, that means that the Rahu Mars is going to be hitting your seventh house and both planets are going to be aspecting your ascendancy. And again, you're having that effect on already your exalted K2. This might mean that all of the things which you are attached to in life, you might have to let them go or they might let go of them naturally. And actually, Scorpio is a vibration which really likes to understand the meaning of things. And so there is this positive energy, which is like, okay, I'm taking these actions and I'm really trying to understand the meaning of those actions. But again, it can help with, it can challenge us in terms of being compulsive, in terms of being impulsive, and in terms of being radical, especially as the Scorpio ascendancy. Um, also, those planet which rules, um, that the signs which Mars rules, other than Scorpio is Aries. And so Aries ascendancies are all going to be affected really intensely during this period. Um, and so that might mean that you're going to have this, we mentioned the Aries Lagna Dharma is to progress, it's to advance. But if we make impulsive decisions, then actually there's gonna be consequences of those decisions. And so we're gonna be taking steps backwards. In addition to um, these kind of energy signs, Taurus, Aries, Scorpio, those are the three ascendancies that are gonna be affected. And so it's not just the ascendancies. If your moon is in Aries, Taurus or Scorpio, if your sun is in Aries, Taurus or Scorpio, if your Mars is in Aries, Taurus or Scorpio, if Rahu or Ketu are in Aries, Taurus or Scorpio, this chart, this transit is gonna impact you a little bit more than other people. So it's very important to understand that. Now, all I wanna finish is just to give some remedies for this period. In honor of Rahu, I like to encourage people to wear multicolored and striped clothing. The most powerful day to honor Rahu is on Saturday. And the most powerful time to honor Rahu is between sunset on Saturday and sunrise Sunday morning. So if you ever wonder why things get really weird on a Saturday night, it's usually because Rahu is most active between sunset on Saturday and sunrise on Sunday morning. Um, the gem for Rahu is called the Hessenite. The nicest quality Hessenites come from Sri Lanka. And if you are going to get a gem of Rahu in your chart, you really have to understand your chart very well or have gotten that recommendation from a professional Vedic astrologer. Because one of the same things that I've seen in wearing a Hessenite is that it can actually have a reverse effect because you're increasing the power of Rahu. And if Rahu is not a functional benefic in your chart, you have to be careful of that. So again, Aquarius ascendants, Rahu Taurus people, Rahu Aquarius people, there's more leeway for you to kind of use this gem, but it is something that you want to be careful about. And it should be set in a Panchadatu setting, five metals. In addition to that, the mantra, which is most beneficial for Rahu, is going to be Durga mantra. Om Shreem Durgaye Namaha. You know, or Om Dream Durgaye Namaha are very good mantras. You can repeat 108 of them. I did the traditional tantric Rahu chant, 
But again, I'm a Rahu Aquarius ascendancy. So that means that Rahu is a functional benefic in my chart. And so I can chant to Rahu directly and then share the benefit of that chant with other people. But if Rahu is in a very malefic or difficult position in your chart, you may want to do the Dorga mantra before you go into the Rahu mantra to make sure that you're getting the positive side of Rahu and that you're being protected by Dorga. So a lot of times I'll recommend for my clients, I want you to do the Dorga mantra and the Rahu mantra, because if you're going to do the Rahu mantra without the Durga mantra, you can be increasing the power of Rahu without reducing its malefic effect. But if you do, do the Durga mantra before the Rahu mantra, you're asking Durga to protect your relationship with Rahu. And then when you do the Rahu mantra, it's much more protective. Just like how when we pray to Lord Ganesh, before we pray to Lord Shiva, I commonly recommend that you pray to Lord Durga before you uh, pray directly to Rahu, unless you really have that positive relationship with Rahu in your chart. Some other remedies during this period, just to kind of conclude everything, Rahu loves foreign and exotic experiences. That means one of the most beneficial things that you can do is to have foreign and exotic experiences. That means travel to new places, travel to foreign and exotic places, try new things. And the things which in your life that you already have an affinity for or a liking of that are kind of occult, mystical, esoteric, outside of the box, outside of the religion that you were born in or outside of the dogma that you were born in, your ability to kind of assimilate wisdom from other cultures and other traditions other than the one that you were born is really beneficial and remedial during this period. But again, all of these things, we don't wanna do them impulsively as this transit kind of suggests us to be vulnerable of these things. So when it comes to your traveling, let us not make a, a sudden decision and all of a sudden, if you're in the United States, you know, go to, New Zealand or go to Australia. Now, there are lots of travel bans here in the United States and in other countries. And so here's one of the things about this transit. I do just want to bring coronavirus into it for one second. We have, we're all tired of the coronavirus. Like I haven't met one person who's not like, I am so ready for this thing to end, but it's not over. So no matter how much we want it to end, it's not over. I do believe at the end of this Rahu Mars conjunction, things will get a little bit easier. But one of the things that we see with this Rahu Mars conjunction is that we want it to be over and we're pissed off that it's not over. And because we're angry that it's not over, we may make impulsive decisions and do things that we used to do without protecting ourselves. We may have a party with 50 people and none of them are wearing masks. We might travel to another place. We might go to a sporting event. Now I'm going to a baseball game in April, but I already have my first shot complete and I'm getting my second shot next week. So for all of you that are the conspiracy theorists out there that are afraid to get vaccine because you think that the government is poisoning you, this coronavirus thing is not going to be over till as a humanity, as an earth, as a society, we all get together and stop being so afraid. One of the things that has perpetuated this illness longer than it needs to be is fear. Media supports fear. Individuals support fear. But we cannot confront something that we're afraid of. We cannot get over something that we're afraid of. One of the things that Rahu Mars kind of represents when it's together is being courageous. Right. And, I, and courageous is not putting yourself in harm's way without protection. Courageous is going and getting the vaccine because you know maybe in the back of my mind, I'm afraid that the government is trying to poison me, but I believe in the greater cause here. So maybe you're gonna be courageous and actually do the necessary steps so that you can be protected. And so that as a human society, we can actually put this thing behind us. So again, I do believe that this conjunction is happening right now for a reason. 
And again, Rahu's exaltation was significant of this pandemic and Ketu's exaltation when they went into their exalted positions, it was right around the time that this coronavirus thing was really hitting us. And so we have to understand that the nodes have brought this pandemic into our world. And now that Mars is with Rahu, are we taking the necessary steps to be courageous so that we can actually move forward in our lives? So I just, I hope that's not too political, but I did want to mention this aspect of like, listen, we're all in this together and let's not be selfish and just be like, you know, I need to protect myself. No, we need to take care of each other because we love each other. And there are always more things that make us the same in humanity than make us different. You know, if you're a science buff out there, our DNAs are 99% similar. And so how dare we try to be rude and unkind to each other based off of the less than 1% that our DNA is different. So again, I do believe that this is a period and transit, which is supposed to help unify us. If we have the courage and the power to love each other, despite our differences. So that's one thing that I do really believe is a more powerful spiritual aspect of this transit. And so on one side of it, you are having this incredibly impulsive, selfish, compulsive, radical manifestation. And on the positive side of it, you're having a mystical, you're having a spiritual, you're having a supportive, you're having a caring, you're having a courageous manifestation of it. So I ask all of you out there, let it align to the higher power of both Rahu and Mars during this transit so that that war, so that this energies, which are inherently challenging, allow us to have a positive growth manifestation in our life. So again, thank you all of the astrological community, the followers of my channel, the followers of Dr. Pai's channel, NAVG, Thank you all for taking the time to enjoy this uh, elaboration on the Rahu Mars conjunction. I hope that everyone enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you again, Sandy, for coming and discussing um, Mars and Rahu's conjunction with us and giving us the insight, important remedies and insight that we needed, all needed to know. Thank you. My pleasure. And everyone out there, enjoy the rest of your February and your early March. And I'm sure Nav and I will have an exciting video again for you in the near future. Many blessings, Om Namah Shivaya and Namaste. Thank you.